Hello everyone. In this video, I'll talk about the second proposition of Modi, Glani and Miller for the tax-free economy. But before we start, let's look at certain assumptions for the levered and unlevered firm. In case of unlevered firm, all the assets are financed by the equity worth rupees ten thousand. However, in the case of levered firm, the debt equity ratio is one is to one, whereas the total value of the firm is still ten thousand, and hence the debt equity split is five thousand each. The expected operating income in both the cases is fifteen hundred, and the return required by the debt holders in case of levered firm is ten percent. Let's now look at the implications for MM One's proposition in in these two companies. in case you are planning to invest in the companies as you can see the table and notice that the leverage increases the expected stream of earnings per share but not the share price the reason is that the change in the expected earnings stream is exactly offset by a change in the rate at which the earnings are discounted the expected return on the shares increases from 15 to 20% we now show how this comes out the expected return which is ra is equal to the expected operating income divided by the total market value of the firm securities and hence it comes out to be 15% we have seen that in the case of perfect capital markets the company's borrowing decision does not affect either the firm's operating income or the total market value of its securities therefore the borrowing decision also does not affect the expected return in case of the levered firm Now suppose an investor holds all the company's debt and all of its equity in case of the levered firm the investor is entitled to all the firm's operating income therefore the expected return is ra the expected return on a portfolio is equal to the weighted average of the expected returns on the individual holdings therefore the expected returns on this portfolio consisting all the firm security comes out to be proportion in debt multiplied by the expected return on debt plus the proportion in equity multiplied by the expected return on equity now those of you who have seen my previous video on vap would realize that this is nothing but co company cost of capital or the weighted average cost of capital we can turn this formula around to find the value of re which comes out to be expected return on assets multiplied by expected return on assets minus expected return on debt multiplied by the debt equity ratio and this is exactly the proposition given by modi glani and miller in the case of tax free economy the expected return of re rate of return on common stock of a levered firm increases in the proportion to the debt to equity expressed in terms of market value and that the rate of increase also depends on the spread between ra and rd plus the expected return on the debt we can check this formula out first in the case of unlevered firm in the case of unlevered firm re will be equal to ra as all the assets are financed by the equity and it comes out to be 15% the expected return on assets in case for a levered firm is still 15% however the return on equity has been increased from 15% to 20% now when the firm is levered the shareholders require a premium of 5% to compensate for the extra risk mm one's proposition 1 one says that the financial leverage has no effect on the shareholders wealth however the proposition 2 says that the rate of return they can expect to receive on their shares increases as the firm's debt to equity ratio changes how can the shareholders be indifferent to the increased leverage when it increases the expected return the answer is that in that any increase in expected return is exactly offset by an increase in the risk and therefore in the shareholders required rate of returns look at what happens to the risk if the shares move uh, for the, to the shares if it moves the equity equal debt equity proportions let's say that the operating income falls from 1500 to 500 the debt equity proportion does not affect the rupee risk borne by the equity shareholders under all the equity financing equity earnings drop by 1 rupee there are 1000 outstanding shares so the total equity earnings fall by One rupee multiplied by thousand, which gives thousand rupees. With fifty percent debt, the same drop in operating income reduces earnings per share by two rupees. But there are only five hundred shares outstanding, so the total equity income drops by two rupee multiplied by five hundred, which is thousand. Just as in the case of unlevered firm. However, the debt equity choice does amplify the spread of percentage returns. If the firm is all equity financed, a decline of one thousand in the operating income reduces the return on shares by ten percent. 
if the firm issues risk-free debt with a fixed interest payment of 10% or 500 in this case, the decline of 1000 in the operating income reduces the return on shares by 20%. In other words, the effect of proposed leverage is to double the amplitude of the swings in the shares. Whatever the beta of the firm shares before the refinancing, it would be twice as high afterward the debt is introduced. And hence, now you can see why the investors require higher rate of return on the levered equity and the required return simply rises to match the increased risk. This is simply the second proposition given by Modiglani and Miller. Thank you and do join for more videos.